Hi guys, it's Tekosachi with another Men of War video. This is the same teams, or no, not the same teams, the same ally as the last video I made. It's also a 2v2, um, but we have a couple of different enemies, and of course it's a different map. The last one was snowy. Once again, I buy a submachine gun infantry squad right off the bat. Once again, we are British versus the United States. Don't know why this guy liked United States versus British so much, but um, he's the host, his choice, and I buy a Daimler armored car right off the bat. Um, this map, I like this map. It's pretty good. I don't know, maybe the middle is not um, the most interesting place to fight around, but um, overall it's pretty nice, and there's a cool little church on the right, but we're not going to see much of the church, because I am on the left, and the enemy is on the right against my ally. Um, so right off the bat, they drive a Greyhound. Very risky proposition. You never know what kind of stuff is going to pop up and shoot your Greyhound. In this case, uh, I got hit by my ally's Piat. The Piat is basically the bazooka for the Germans. Um, in real life, it was like a spring-loaded thing. It was a really bizarre weapon, but... um. Apparently worked out pretty well for them. It took like 100 pounds or 200 pounds of force to cock the thing, so you'd have to like lie down on your back and use your feet if you want to do it without like breaking your arm or something. But um, when it would fire, it wouldn't leave like a huge like <laughs> rocket trail behind you because it just like fires it out of a spring. It just go boing, and so it was tough to tell where you were. Uh, Men of War does not simulate that. Men of War basically has the piot work like any other bazooka. Um, it has a kind of twisty path when it flies, but um, that pretty much the same. So I've seized the left with no trouble at all. Opponent's sort of asleep. You can hear some chickens clucking inside the barn. Look at them chickens. Tactical chickens. Um, and I'm also moving in on the middle uh, with the help of my ally. Ally has not done anything to seize the right, so hopefully he will rectify this. Um, these chickens are just clucking the heck at me, so um, I decide I'm going to redeploy one of the chickens. Um, tactical chicken deployment is one of the most important parts of Men of War. Um, I've seen even good players um, fail to deploy the chicken correctly, or um, when they do deploy the chicken, they don't even bother deploying the chicken. So you see, I've, um, I've tossed my chicken, and uh, we will see where the chips fall. The chicken is now... Um, it was only stunned. I hope none of you were going to accuse me of animal cruelty. That was not a dead chicken, it was simply a stunned chicken. It was pining for the fjords, and um, it has now gotten up and is wandering around, so hopefully that will distract my opponent long enough for me to buy four tanks and sneak them into his uh, home country and destroy the farms that produce the food that he eats. And they'll starve to death. That, I don't know what the heck it's doing. That's a little Stuart. Um, once again, the opponent's too aggressive. That Stuart is on our half of the map, and all it takes is a little boom from my little Daimler, which I am using mostly as fire support, really, is what I find light vehicles useful for um, in a map like this. Um, you, you see how useful light vehicles are in a map like this if you just drive them at the enemy. Uh, apparently not very useful, because um, this map is very naturally split into two, I find. And on the opponent's side, I don't know what was going on with my UI at this point. That's a really weird arrow. Um, on the opponent's side, things are very inhospitable. It's They have very open sight lines. It's very easy for them to nail you with an AT gun or someone hiding in a bush. There's a lot of bushes for them to hide behind. But um, in the middle, there's a lot of built-up like stuff blocking line of sight, which means if you have someone on a uh, light vehicle on your side, you're fairly protected. You see uh, this light tank has moved up and hasn't wouldn't really have a chance to shoot at me, and I'm backing behind a building so that he doesn't get a chance. Um, he actually does get a chance. Very lucky that he missed right there. Um, that could have been extremely bad. It's surprising I didn't die. Um, lucky he missed again. Um, but yeah, you have a lot more breathing room on your side. Um, I try and get my submachine gunners out of here because this um, M3 Lee is showing up to ravage me. Um, but they're probably going to die anyways. He's just going to kill them all. I tell him to go prone to hopefully do some sort of damage. And of course, he drives right into my allies. Piat infantry hiding in that bush, so things worked out really well, and once again, they're being way too aggressive with their light vehicles, and like I was saying, you drive it onto the opponent's side, open sight lines asking for it. Drive it on your side, lots of stuff blocking your opponent's sight lines, you can use it as a mobile fire base. Um, it's important to use it as a mobile fire base, if you don't keep moving, stuff's gonna die, you see that my allies Piat infantry just gets blown the heck up because he didn't move after firing, so I'm gonna retrieve this Piat, see if I can kill this Chaffee with it. Um, so you really have to reposition everybody after you fire. There's no free lunch, but um, light vehicles are very good at this because they can move very quickly. On a lot of maps, light vehicles are good for marauding, for attacking your opponent in their territory, moving very quickly and lithely. But um, you see here, it certainly doesn't work. We have three wrecks on our side already, and had I moved my, um, in my had I moved my Daimler armored car into their side, it might have been dead by now. So they've got people taking the middle. I wanted, kind of want to toss a grenade over there, but this is my Piat guy, and I feel sort of bad for getting him killed because he's going to get killed. 
boom, I made a last ditch run for the Chaffee, but that wasn't happening. Um, he's getting pretty close with his Chaffee, um, trying to support his infantry assault, and he's certainly taking the middle, but he's going to pay for it, especially now that I'm setting up a 17 pounder, and boom, 17 pounder, boom, right through the Chaffee. Um, very little will stand up to a British 17 pounder AT gun, a 76 millimeter, very powerful AT gun, and um, not a lot of American tanks especially can take the punishment it puts out, and um, my ally finished it off with a shot from his Churchill or his Cromwell or whatever the heck tank he's bought, so things looking not awful for us. My ally managed to seize the point on the right, or he's in the process of it, and it uh, looks like we're going to be able to take back the middle unless something surprising pops up. You'll notice they have not contested the left at all, so um, these guys maybe not uh, the best players in Men of War history. I don't know who the best players are in Men of War history, and uh, always good to check your sight lines. Uh, it turns out my AT gun was behind a hill. You don't want to figure that out in a tense moment when you're trying to shoot an enemy tank. It's better to know that beforehand. Um, and there's not a lot of indication if you don't go into direct control or check yourself. And I point out this um, Sherman driving up on my ally for his benefit, and I also reposition my AT gun, but then I reposition my AT gun again. I can't decide what the heck I'm going to hit. Um, that Chaffee fires right off the bat without stopping and aiming first, so he misses my light vehicle, and so I'm going to draw a bead on him with my AT gun, is what I'm trying to do in direct control, but it turns out that um, I'm sort of on the upslope of the hill, and I'm not going to be able to hit him because I'm facing basically up into the air, so I task my Daimler armored car to do it, I think, or I'm just waiting for my AT gun to reposition. Yeah, it was too risky to use the armored car, I just let the AT gun do it against light tank on. 17 pounder really gonna kill it in one or two shots. I destroy the turret so he's getting out of there. Um, I really want to kill him so I'm trying to shoot through this building but I realize it's kind of a... I'm shooting through two walls of the building and um, that's not ideal. Now I'm shooting through one wall but um, I figure you know what let's blow this building up first so I switch to high explosive rounds because high explosive rounds are often what you want to use to demolish a building and so I blow and there goes you know there goes a chunk and then I switch to AP again because I'm like well you know eventually the wall's going to collapse and probably an AP shell is going to do it more or less as well and um, also while it shoots through I want a chance of penetrating so I don't know, maybe it would have been better to toss off another HE. Uh, you notice I keep firing even though I'm not 100% sure he's still there. Um, it sort of looks like the shell is hitting something. You can sort of see in the fog of war, but it sort of looks like the shell isn't hitting something, and it's usually pretty tough to tell. So I'm just waiting for him to reappear. It's going to take him a while to fix the turret anyways. And so now he sends um, a jeep over to see what is up at the point. 